Hi friends. Uh, this is Milo. He's our cat. He uh, he killed a couple rats here in the last month or so. Anyway, I'm doing a message here called "From Darkness to Light." It's a sermon I'm going to be uh, presenting here soon, and I just thought I'd share it online as well. Uh, what is your first memory? The first thing you can think of at the beginning of your life, when you were in your mother's womb or belly. What did you see? We began life in the dark. A warm, dark pool from inside of our mother's womb or uterus. And after many months of darkness, we are born into the light of this world. We start life as a baby and grow up into a man or a woman. In this world, there is not only physical darkness and light, but spiritual darkness and light as well. You know, there's the... Uh, the powers of good and God, and there's the powers of wickedness and evil. But the future will be very different. In the womb of our mother, we were in the dark for months, but in the kingdom of God, we'll be continually in the light. Darkness will cease and become a thing of the past in the coming kingdom of God. We will be the children of light, and we will shine as the sunlight. Praise God. This experience in this world is temporary. And passing, and but we, but while we're here, we're making our decisions that will help determine our destiny in God's kingdom, our position, and and so on there. But what about this world? How did this world start out? Going back in time, even the world itself began in darkness. Genesis chapter one, verse one to five. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. And God saw the light that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. And the darkness, and God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the fir first day. It's interesting um, how the world is born from darkness to light, even as we are as human beings. First the darkness and then the light. Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 4 and 5. Then the word of the Lord came unto me, Jeremiah, saying, Behold, I the Lord formed you, created you, made you in the womb, in the belly. I knew you <clears throat> before you came out of the womb. And I sanctified you, set you apart for a holy use. And I ordained you to be a prophet unto the nations. Here God is speaking to Jeremiah the prophet and informs him that he was known by God before he was conceived in his mother's womb. Wow. God knows the future. He knows all about us before we're even designed and made. We are precious in God's sight even before we are born. So what does that tell you about abortion? Yeah. God is good and life is precious. But what about Jesus Christ, God's son? He was born into this world as Emmanuel, which means, interpreted, God with us. You know, Jesus experienced the darkness in this world as well. John chapter 1, verse 1 to 5, 9 and 14. In the beginning was the Word. Now the Word of God is Jesus Christ, the Logos. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. All things were made or created by Him. That is Jesus. And without him was not anything made that was made in. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness comprehends or does not understand it. That was the true light which gives light to every man that comes into the world. And the word was made flesh. Yes, Jesus became a human baby. And we and dwelt or lived among us, and we beheld his glory, his divine character, and perfection. The glory is of the only begotten Son of the Father, full of grace and truth. The most wonderful child, person, human being who ever lived. God with us. So adorable. So worthy of our adoration and worship. Jesus made and designed this world, working along with the Spirit of God. And... It's the love and the goodness of God and Christ that is the true light that makes our lives much more tolerable and acceptable in this world of suffering and darkness. 
Jesus grew up and became a man, began his public ministry of healing, sickness, and preaching the gospel, the good news to people, and teaching the truth about God. That's why I love to study the life of Christ and the gospels. So much light. John chapter 3, verse 1 to 6. There was a man of the Pharisees, the religious leaders and teachers in that day, named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night for a secret interview and said unto him, Rabbi or Master, we know that you are a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles that you do except God be with him. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Truly, truly, I say unto you, except a man be born again or from above, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said unto him, Well, how can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? <laughs> and Jesus answered, Truly, truly, I say unto you, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. So we must be born both by our physical mother and again by the Holy Spirit. After physical birth, we must have spiritual birth to enter into God's kingdom. The Holy Spirit gives us birth. She's a wonderful personality that we need to consider and learn. Jesus says in John 3, verse 19 to 21, And this is the condemnation, that light has come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds or their behaviors were evil. For everyone that does evil hates the light, neither comes to the light, unless his deeds should be reproved or corrected. But he that does truth comes to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest or revealed that they are done in God, wrought in God. So if we want to do good, we come to the light, that people can see what we're doing is good. But if we're evil, we don't want to go to the light, because the light would show us how corrupt and wicked we are. Notice the political situation we're in today. There's a lot of uh, corruption, I dare say. And they're hiding their deeds under the dark. But the light is coming, showing it up. John chapter 8, verse 12. Then spoke Jesus again unto them and said, I am the light of the world. He that follows me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. John 12, 35. Then Jesus said unto them, Yet a little while is the light with you. Walk while you have the light, unless darkness come upon you. For he that walks in darkness, or hatred and sin, does not know where he's going. Jesus personally decided to walk into the darkness of this world to bring us people into the light of love and truth. Let's have a look at some of the darker moments in Jesus' life. You know, the Bible is just full of this knowledge of the darkness and the light, physical and spiritual. And uh, I'm just giving you a tiny foretaste of what the Bible says about it. Uh, John chapter 13. Now before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour was come that he should depart out of this world unto the Father, Jesus knew he was Messiah. He was only here temporarily. Having loved his own, his disciples, which were in the world, he loved them unto the end. He loved them to the end of his life when he was crucified. He loved them to the end of the world. He loved them all the way through the new heaven and new earth. He, he always loves his people. And Passover supper being ended, the devil, how, having now put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him, for Jesus he knew who should betray him. Therefore he said, You are not all clean. I speak not of you all. I know whom I have chosen. But that the scripture may be fulfilled, he that eats bread with me, he has lifted up his heel against me. To lift up the heel must mean betrayal, to be stepped on like trash. So sad that Judas would stoop that low to betray his Lord for 30 pieces of silver. Now I tell you before it come that when it is come to pass, you may believe that I am he. When Jesus had said this, he was troubled in spirit and testified and said, Truly, truly, I say unto you, that one of you shall betray me. You know, Jesus was suffering tremendous emotional pain at this moment. It really hurt his feelings. You know, God has tender feelings. <clears throat> now there was 
Then the disciples looked one upon another, doubting of whom he spoke. They didn't know who he was talking about. Now there was leaning on Jesus' bosom or his chest one of his disciples, whom Jesus loved. And Simon Peter therefore pointed to him, beckoned to him, and <clears throat> that he that John should ask who it should be of whom Jesus was talking about. He then lying on Jesus' breast said unto him, Lord, who is it? And Jesus answered, He it is to whom I shall give a sop or a piece of bread when I have dipped it, dipped it in the sauce. And when he had dipped the bread, he gave it to Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon. And after, after the bread, Satan entered into him. Then said Jesus to him, What you do, do quickly. Jesus knew what was going on. Now no man at the table knew for what intent he spoke this to him. For some of them thought, well maybe Judas had the, he has the money bag. That Jesus said to him, go buy those things that we have need of for the feast. Or well, that he should give something to the poor. He then having received the bread went immediately out. And it was night. Yes. And it was black as night in Judas Iscariot's heart. John 18. When Jesus had therefore spoken these words, he went Forth was his disciples over the brook Cedron, a creek, where was a garden, into the which he entered and his disciples. And Judas also, which betrayed him, knew the place, for Jesus went there many times with his disciples. And Judas, then having received a band or a gang of men and officers from the chief priests and the Pharisees, came there with lanterns and torches and weapons at night. And Jesus, therefore, knowing all things that should come upon him, went forth and said unto them, who are you looking for? And they answered him, Jesus of Nazareth. And Jesus said to them, I am he. As soon then as he had said unto them, I am he, they went backward and fell down to the ground. Now Jesus, he had every opportunity to run away and escape, but he didn't do that. Jesus was on a mission to take away our sins and to save us for paradise. So he had to go through this horrible experience. This horrible nightness, darkness, valley of the shadow of death to save us from our sins. <clears throat> they asked, then he asked them again, Who are you looking for? And he said, Jesus of Nazareth. And Jesus answered, I have told you that I am he. If therefore you seek me, let these my disciples go their way, that the saying might be fulfilled which he spoke. Of those whom you gave me, I have lost no one. Then Simon Peter, having a sword, drew it, and struck the high priest's servant and cut off his ear. Now the servant's name was Malchus. And Jesus said to Peter, Put up your sword into the sheath. The cup which the Father has given me, shall I not drink it? This cup of suffering and a horrible death, shall I not drink it to save your souls from sin and to give you paradise, life evermore? Jesus means don't protect me. This is my destiny to be crucified and be put to death. I have to do this to save sinners. Then the band or the gang and the captain and officers of the Jews took Jesus and bound or arrested him and led him away to Annas first for he was father-in-law to Caiaphas which was the high priest that same year. Now Caiaphas was he that gave counsel to the Jews that it was expedient that one man should die for the people. He prophesied of Christ's coming death. Then Peter entered into the judgment hall again, or Pilate, I'm sorry, Pontius Pilate entered the judgment hall, and called Jesus and said unto him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered him, Do you say this thing of yourself, or did others tell it to you of me? And Pilate answered, Am I a Jew? Your own nation. And the chief priests have delivered you to me. What have you done? And Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then would my servants fight. And I should not be delivered to the Jews, but now my kingdom is not from here. See, that's the thing. Jesus had the power. He had the power. He could have fought and conquered the whole Roman army with his bare hands. Jesus had more power than any martial artist we've ever heard of. He had more power than Samson. He had more wisdom than Solomon. He was the creator, the great I Am. But the character of God is love. And Jesus demonstrated that. He allowed people to kill him to prove 
that he won't strike back. He's very kind and forgiving and loving and good. And we should get to know him and become like him so we can share in paradise. So John 19, Then Pilate therefore took Jesus and scourged or had him whipped. And the soldiers plaited or folded together a crown of thorns and put that on his head and shoved those thorns down into his head. And they put on him a purple robe. And they said, Hail or hello, King of the Jews. And they did a making fun of worshiping him. And they struck him with their hands. They beat him up. And it was the preparation of the Passover and about the sixth hour. And he, Pilate, said unto the Jews, Behold your king. But they cried out, Away with him, away with him, crucify him. Pilate said unto them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priests answered, We have no king but Caesar. Isn't that sad? The Jewish leaders gave up their allegiance to God and gave it to Caesar to get rid of Jesus. Jesus became the Passover lamb, the true Passover. All those lambs that were slain pointed to Jesus, the true lamb of God, to take away the sins of the world. And after, after they said, We have no king but Caesar, then Pontius Pilate delivered Jesus to them to be crucified. And they took Jesus and led him away. And he, Jesus, bearing his cross, went forth to a place called the place of a skull, Golgotha, which is called in the Hebrew Golgotha. And there they crucified him and two others with him, one on either side and Jesus in the middle. And Pilate wrote a title and put it on the cross. And the writing said, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. And he truly is king. He's king of the Gentiles. He's king of Pontius Pilate. He's king of me. He's king of everybody. And one day he will be worshipped and adored as king of kings and lord of lords by every created being. That's what the prophecy says. Now there stood by the cross of Jesus his mother, Mary, and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Cleopas, And Mary Magdalene. Wow, at least three Marys were there at the cross. How do you keep track of them all, right? So when Jesus therefore saw his mother and the disciple John standing by whom he loved, he said unto his mother, Woman, behold your son. And then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour that disciple took her unto his own home. You know, Jesus and John had a special relationship. I mean, they all... They all did. You know, everybody has their relationship with Jesus. Some are very close and intimate. Some are very far away and distant. But you see, John, he loved Jesus. John was open. You know, he was, him and his brother uh, James were called the sons of thunder. They were ready for a fight. He said, Jesus, are you going to bring down fire from heaven and burn up those Samaritans because they refused to give you a hotel for the night? And Jesus said, you don't know what manner of spirit you are of. The son of man, Christ, has not come to destroy men's lives, but to save them. And so John was transformed day by day, beholding Christ's beautiful character. He was transformed into his likeness and became most like Christ. And we can be like that too. We can become like Christ because by beholding, as in a glass, as in a mirror, the glory of the Lord, we become more and more like Christ, transformed, changed from day to day, from moment to moment. When Jesus, therefore, had received the vinegar, he said, I thirst. He said, it is finished. It's done. It's over with. And he bowed his head and he gave up the spirit. He died. He breathed his last. The Jews, therefore, because it was the preparation that the body should not remain upon the cross on the Sabbath day, for that Sabbath day was a high day. You know, Friday is the preparation day for the Sabbath. Also, because this Sabbath was the same day as the Passover feast, it was a high Sabbath. Not only the seventh day, but it was a, the Jews' feast day, Passover. Christ, the Passover lamb, was slain right on time. But when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, made under the law. Galatians chapter 4, verse 4. And, and Christ, he will come the second time, right on time. When the fullness of the time was come, Christ will come the second time, without sin, unto salvation. So the Jews begged Pilate that their legs might be broken and that they might be taken down from the cross. Then came the soldiers and broke the legs of the first and of the other which were crucified with him. 
But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. But one of the soldiers with a spear pierced his side, and there came out blood and water. You know, there was a scripture that says, not a bone of him will be broken. Psalm 22, a messianic psalm, when Jesus was crucified. Then they took the body of Jesus and wrapped it in linen clothes with the spices as the manner of the Jews is to bury. Now the place where he was crucified, there was a garden. And in the garden, a new tomb wherein never man was yet laid. And there they laid Jesus, therefore, because of the Jews' preparation day, because the tomb was near at hand. Jesus experienced death for every sinner. He knows the enemy well and how to defeat the enemies of God. Praise the Lord. Thank God Jesus was resurrected from the dead on the first day of the week. Then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, when the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, there came Jesus and stood in the middle and said unto them, Peace be unto you. They were so shocked and surprised. What? And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side that was had been pierced. He had the wounds, the scars, or whatever it was in his resurrected body. The proof was there. Then were the disciples glad. They were so happy when they saw the Lord. And Jesus said to them again, Peace be unto you. As my Father has sent me, even so send I you. And many other signs truly did Jesus in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written that you might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing you might have life through his name. Just experience it. Just test it out. Pray. Seek the Lord and see what happens. God is real. He'll prove it to you. John uh, 21, 25. And there were also many other things which Jesus did, the which, if these should be written, every one, I suppose that even the world itself could not contain the books that should be written. Amen. God's word is inspired and true. Believe it. Trust it. Obey it. And you will see for yourself. You'll have the experience that I have the light of God. I have the truth. Jesus lived out his life in this world both with darkness and light. And on judgment day, when the sinner pleads the difficulties of life, the pain and sufferings, how it just wasn't fair and how it's really God's fault anyway, then the sinner will see a vision like movie replay of Jesus and what he lived through. The persecutions, the injustice, the unfairness of being treated as evil when he was so innocent and good, the pain and torture of his death by crucifixion, etc., then what excuses for sin and evil will be acceptable before God? Jesus proved to be faithful and resisted all the enemy's temptations. He is our example. The perfect life of righteousness that Jesus lived is given to cover over every repenting soul that we might be acceptable before God. And what an insult to reject the gift of life as offered by the Messiah, Jesus Christ. During the time of the early church, in Acts 26, 18, Jesus spoke to the Apostle Paul, I, Jesus, will send you to the Jews and the Gentiles to open their eyes, to turn them from darkness to the light and from the power of Satan unto God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them which are sanctified or made holy by faith that is in me, Jesus Christ. Romans 13, 12, The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. 2 Corinthians 4, uh, 3, 4, and 6, But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to those who are lost, in whom the God of this world, Satan, the devil, has blinded the minds of them which do not believe, unless the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, <clears throat> who is the image of God, should shine unto them. For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness and shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Jesus showed us the Father's spirit, character, and personality. <clears throat> God is good. Ephesians 5, 8 and 11. For you were sometimes darkness in your past life of sin, and now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove or correct them. Ephesians 6.12 
For we wrestle not against flesh and blood or people, but against spirits, the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Colossians 1, 12-14 Giving thanks unto the Father, which has made us prepared to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light, who has delivered us from the power of darkness and has translated us into the kingdom of his dear Son, Jesus, and who we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. 1 Thessalonians 5, 4 and 5 But you, brethren, are not in darkness, that that day the coming of Christ should overtake you as a thief. You are all the children of light and the children of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. We are leaving behind the dark kingdom of this world, hate, jealousy, revenge, evil, sadness, gloom, and fear. We are joining the kingdom of light and of God. Love, joy, peace, patience, goodness, and happiness. 1 John 1, 5-7 This then is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you, that God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ his Son cleanses us from all sin. Praise the Lord. 1 John 2, 8-11 Again a new commandment, I write unto you, which thing is true in him and in you, because the darkness is past and the true light now shines. He that says he is in the light and hates his brother is in darkness even until now. He that loves his brother abides in the light, and there is no occasion of stumbling or getting tripped up in him. But he that hates his brother is in darkness and walks in darkness, and knows not where he goes, because that darkness has blinded his eyes. In the last book of the Bible, we have a summary of how the darkness will become a thing of the past, and the true light will forever shine in God's kingdom, and the earth made new. Praise God. Revelation 21, verse 23 to 27. And the city had no need of the sun, neither of the moon, to, to shine in it. For the glory of God did lighten it, and the Lamb, or Christ, is the light thereof. And the nations of them which are saved shall walk in the light of it, and the kings of the earth do bring their glory and honor into it. And the gates of it shall not be shut at all by day, for there shall be no night there. And these shall bring the glory and honor of the nations into it. Revelation 22, 3-5 And there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it, and his servant shall serve him. And he shall see his face, and his name shall be in their foreheads. And there shall be no night there, and they need no candle, neither light of the sun. For the Lord God gives them light, and they shall rule forever and ever. They're going to rule. They're going to rule in the... In the cities in the earth made new and who are they going to be ruling over that's interesting isn't it so now we know the rest of the story at least up and up until we enter into the kingdom of God and on into the earth made new so the time is coming when darkness and evil will only be in the past the glory of God and Christ will outshine the sun moon and stars in a very pleasing and beautiful way we are destined to be healed in our bodies and souls and blessed in every way imaginable and beyond. Thank God for the Bible promises that give us so much hope and inspiration for our glorious future and beyond. God is love. Blessings to all of you.